Here are 10 ways that our lives have changed since we moved to Germany. <laughs> channel i'm sarah of my merry messy life.com and this is hey i'm kevin my husband and as many of you know we are a family of six and we moved to germany in february seven with a cat family of six with a cat <laughs> who moved to germany in february of 2021 and from the u.s from, the, from america and we're just sharing our adventures with you and how our lives have changed and, and that kind of thing. So a big reason we wanted to move back to Europe, we used to live in France, was for the lifestyle change. The daily life is a lot different here than in the US, so we're going to share with you how our daily lives are different. And again, this may vary depending on where Germans live. The way we're living may not necessarily be how all Germans are living, right? And where um, Americans live. I mean, there's things yeah. that we didn't have when we lived in Georgia that some Americans have, you know? It's just yeah. You yeah. Know, it's just how our lives have changed in this journey of ours. Right. So we're not saying that all Americans do things a certain way or all Germans do things a certain way. There's lots of variations in both countries. So the first one is uh, we're not dependent on our car in the same way we're, we were. Well, actually, we still we don't have, no have car. a car, but eventually <laughs> we, we no will. <laughs> so we, we depend on no car. <laughs> right. So we've lived our lives independent of a car, which is quite amazing for mm -hmm. most Americans, I guess, unless you live in the middle of a city, there's plenty yeah. of folks that don't have cars. Um, yeah. But we don't live in the middle of the city and we don't have a car. We live in the countryside. Right. No so, uh, yeah. you know, we've taken the train a couple of times. It was the first time ever that our daughter had taken the train. Um, mm -hmm. We'd ridden the subway a couple of times in Atlanta with the boys, but they don't even remember it was so long ago. So that's really cool. You know, every time we're downtown and, and you hear the the ding, ding, ding of the of the train train signals, every, the kids always want to stop and watch the train. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've taken the train to nearby towns. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that I think, you know, will still continue to some degree, even when we get a car, you know, we, it's nice to not have to always drive a car around everywhere. Uh, number two, another way our lives have changed is we go to the bakery nearly every single day. Well, go to the bakery at all. When's the last time in America you went to a store yeah. that was only a bakery? Yeah. Okay. We never went to a bakery <laughs> yeah, in, in the U.S. <laughs> and now we go nearly every single day. And we, we have this one favorite in town. Is it called Kreidel, right? Kreidel? Kreidel? Anyway. Anyway, K-R-E-I, I believe. So it'd be Kreidel. Right. Yeah. Um, anyway, the point is, it's this cute little bakery. We love it. Um, and we get Mischbrot. And for you Germans, do you like Mischbrot like us? Um, I believe that means it's a mixture of whole wheat and white. Mixture White of something. Flour? I'm not sure what all. Yeah, it's, it a almost, mi it's a mixture bread. It almost that's all we know. It tastes like a little rye or pumpernickel or something in there. But yeah, I don't know. Who knows? It's a wonderful flavor. And we it's love like, it. We get you know, the big one, the grossest. Yeah. <laughs> we just picked it by rent. You know, by the first time I got it, I was like, hey, that looks like a loaf of bread. I'll try that one. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so the first couple of days, we just try a bunch of different ones. And that's the one we settled on as our family favorite. Yeah, and then every Sunday we like to go to the bakery. Kevin goes and takes one of the kids usually, and or two of the kids, um, and gets um, panel chocolate croissants. Yeah, chocolate croissants. Yeah, chocolate croissants, mm -hmm. and uh, we have those on Sunday morning. So it's really yummy, a, a nice fun tradition that we yeah. started. We also heard that other Germans do this tradition, but then I've been told on Instagram that no Germans do this tradition. So I've been told by some Germans, yes, we do this every Sunday, and others <laughs> say no. So obviously there's variations going on, um, but. I, that is a typical European thing is to start your breakfast with bread. There's so many good bakeries in Europe. Um, anyway, so we go to the bakery nearly every single day and we love German bread. Yep. And Germany is actually not as known for their bread like other countries are. So for those of you who are outside of Germany, just know yep. that if you ever travel here, definitely go to the German bakeries. They yep. have excellent bread here, just like France does, just like Italy does. German. Very, very underrated in Germany. Yes, yeah, underrated. Sure. It's great, great bread. It's not just sausages and beer here. You know, you definitely want it to eat the bread. So number three, just like we go to the bakery every day, almost, we almost every day go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of linked with not having a car. So you can only yeah. bring home what yeah. you can carry yes. and what you can carry up the hill getting uh -huh. back to our house. <laughs> Oh gosh. So, yes. so yeah, we go to the grocery store quite often and I think we're probably eating a lot more 
fresh fruits and vegetables. We ate a lot of yeah. frozen before, you know, we had our big giant yeah. freezer and we just filled it up with a, tons of frozen vegetables. Yeah. And because we only went to the grocery store once, once a, a week, week, the fresh vegetables wouldn't keep. So, yeah. you know, we're eating a lot more actually fresh fruits and vegetables, I think, now yeah. than we used so to. Yeah, better. I mean, it's a side effect. It was not like intentional or anything. And it's also because our fridge and our freezer are much smaller here. Yeah. So we have less space to sort things, but it's been totally fine. It's not been a problem to go more often to the grocery store because honestly, that helps us get our step count in. <laughs> right. Kevin and I are always and, keeping track of our steps. And Ella is always asking, so I want to go into town. Yes. She's always saying that all the time. I want to go into town. I want to go into town. So yes. take her with us and she gets her little shopping cart and it's a fun time. Number four, in the U.S., the kids always took the bus to school. They all deal with bus sickness and car sickness. So that mm. wasn't always a fun thing for them, though they loved being with their friends on the bus. They did like the bus, but they didn't like the car sickness, the bus sickness that came with it. Now in Germany, when the kids are in school, they walk or ride their bicycles to school. And that's been really cool. Once we have a car, we'll probably drive them when it's pouring down rain and when ah, it's pouring snow. Okay. They can make it. Whatever. <laughs> I would drive them. <laughs> Although I guess, you know, once um, once our oldest gets into Realschule or Gymnasium, once he goes to, you know, gets through elementary school, there aren't those schools in our town. So he'll take the bus or the train or something probably. Yeah, true. To get to, to, get to school. Once you get to fifth grade, you're usually, if you're in a small town, you're usually leaving that town to go to another school for middle school and high school. So, um, yeah. Gabriel will be taking the bus next year. <laughs> but for now, we can walk and ride their bicycles to school, and it's really cool. Yep. So number five is especially important for Sarah. Uh, it's working on all the clothes washing and, and drying, and the whole routine of not, you know, not having a dryer has to, you know, figure out where to put things. And you know, I guess you're doing laundry a little more frequently even than maybe than you used to before, uh, you know, just trying to adjust to life without a dryer. If you watched our last video, you know that we already talked about not having a dryer and how we hang up all our clothes to dry. Now, I was told by quite a few Germans that there's been studies conducted that show about 40% of Germans have dryers, 60% do not. Some of them said it was more like 50-50. And from Somewhere the comments- in that order of magnitude. Yes. <laughs> And the comments reflected that about half of you said, I don't have a dryer, don't want one, don't need one, don't like them. And the other half said, I do have a dryer. And the people who do have dryers, I noticed in the comments from last week's video, were saying that they use the dryer only for drying sheets and towels and the occasional, you know, shirts and pants that take a long time to dry. So I was like, okay, that, that was really interesting to know. So I actually might end up getting a dryer now that I never thought, oh, I could just use it occasionally. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't really think of that until you left us all your comments. So that was really helpful. So just because we don't have a dryer doesn't mean it's not a thing in Germany to not have a dryer. There are many Germans who have dryers. So number six is speaking a new language. That one's kind of obvious, I guess. You know, you move to a new country and <laughs> there's a, a new language, but you know, it's it's always work. You gotta figure out, well, yeah. Every and I'm not, day. yeah, like I'm, I'm starting to get past the, like every time I go somewhere, I like plan out like a script in my head, <laughs> you know, and you do your Google translate and get your little script ready. I'm just starting to maybe get to the point where I can start to wing it sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, uh, it really expands your mind and, and makes you think and uh, makes you appreciate anybody that has moved from yeah. one place out of their comfort zone into a place that, yeah. that, that is unfamiliar. So yeah, it's, it's, really, it's a really great experience. Yeah, and I always think about, you know, now that we're parents living with children, obviously living with children, um, abroad and how much harder it has been for me this time around to learn the language because I've been having to do so much work to take care of the family and get my children adjusted and I myself have not been able to pour the time and energy into learning German that I was originally hoping to do. So I just wanted that to be something that people know. Like when when you see immigrants in your country from wherever you're watching from, have grace for them, especially <laughs> if they can't speak your language yet. If they are parents, or if they are people who don't have a lot of money and can't afford classes to learn your language or are struggling to find ways to learn your language, have grace with these people because it is not easy to learn a language right away. And it may not be because the person is refusing to learn your language. They just may be 
having a really hard time because they've got a lot going on at home, especially if they are a parent who's trying to help their children thrive and, and adjust to a new culture and language. Because as parents, we always put our kids first. So I'm making sure my kids can speak German first because they're the ones in school every day and they're the ones who really need to understand another language and I'm secondary. That's how I'm think, seeing it anyway. And so I'm learning along with them. But anyway, my point is have grace for the immigrants in your countries who don't speak your language. They probably have a very good reason or they may be in the process of learning and just can't fully speak it yet. Yeah, I mean, there's so many times I go somewhere and I, I'm speaking with my little two-year-old baby German. Oh yeah, and, it sounds and the And the people are so nice and they just sit there and they're patient and then they just start talking in English. Yes, <laughs> they just switch over. Oh, it's so painful listening to this guy listen flop to around. You say, you just said no here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're new. Your accent is so strong. <laughs> oh, but it's great. We've had so many wonderful people here. Been yes, so patient. We've not us. had any problems no. at all with people being patient. They've been very, very kind here. We thank you. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much. Yes. Okay, number seven is that we regularly go on hikes and walks and we're always exercising. It's a rare day that either Kevin or I doesn't get our 10,000 steps in. Um, very rare. And we love that we're much more active and you can sort of just feel the energy here. Like every time I look out the window, somebody is walking down the street. You can see men and women walking to work with their backpacks on and their rain gear or snow gear walking to work. Um, I see them walking to work downtown. You see, um, you know, men and women riding their bicycles to work. You see kids walking to school. And then, you know, we've had vacation the past two weeks and you still see people out walking, no matter what the temperature is, whether it's snowing or raining, there's always somebody out walking or riding their bikes. And so you just feel, I don't know, for me, I'm much more excited to get outside because I see other people doing it. Yeah. And, and, you know, in Georgia where we lived, now this isn't all over America, but where we lived in the suburbs, like, Nobody walks or rides their bikes anywhere. It's dangerous to do so. And everything is so far apart. You couldn't anyway. Well, especially where we drive. lived. We lived in, you know, there were two acre lots, you know, big lots. And there's yeah. a lot of space between. And there was no sidewalk on the side. And so that's just sort of like an important corollary to this, uh, to this number seven is, is uh, just being in the neighborhood. And, you know, all the houses are much closer. And we walk around and we've met our, met our neighbors by walking around. You know, you walk past you know, 10 million times in, in, in a week and you just, you know, get to know them and you just get to say hi. And so for us, that's been a really great way for us to connect with, with the neighbors and be, become part of the community. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And number eight is airing out our house. I guess the main difference is, you know, there's no central air, or no central air conditioning or central heating, uh, you know, where you've got forced air moving through, through right. your, your, your right. house. Yeah. So you've got to, open up the windows and, and let the air in, uh, you know, we, we, you're especially sensitive to mold. So we need to make mm -hmm. sure we, we keep that mold away. So, you know, we're getting that habit every morning, you know, open up the, open up the windows and let some air in for a while. And, uh, you know, it does keep it nice and fresh and clean. It is kind of nice in a way. Yeah. And I used to be like, you know, coming from Georgia, it was so hot and warm there and I didn't like the cold. And I was really afraid of coming here and having to air out the house and get cold and stuff. And now I've gotten so acclimated to the cold in just two, the month and a half that we've lived here that I don't even mind the fresh air flowing through the house, even though it's cold, I've just gotten used to it. But if you do a quick Google search on Germans airing out their homes, you'll see a ton of articles on how uh, Germans love to have their homes fresh and aired out and they like to hang their clothes out to dry in the sun because it's so fresh and smells so good and they really love fresh air. Number nine is of course we are eating different food than we did in the U.S. and that's obvious but you know i mean germans and americans do have a lot of foods in common yeah. america does eat a lot of sausages and beef and and meat heavy things just like germany does and we eat a lot of potato products and stuff in america sure. so it hasn't been like a huge change in food but i definitely try to buy new things at the grocery store each time we go and try them out and uh -huh. i ask on instagram what is this and how do i use it and i love the comments i get you give me some great recipes and ways to use different things. Yeah. 
like we've already found out that the kids' favorite food, which is a lot of German kids' favorite food, is schnitzel and Kartoffelnudeln. And schnitzel is basically just fried pork or fried chicken. Who fried doesn't like turkey. that, right? Right. We all like that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, now we've got schnitzel night. Yeah, every we week have, now we, we, we have had pizza night. night, and we still we, we brought that one, brought pizza night with us from America. And now we've got yeah. schnitzel night. Yeah, <laughs> and we <laughs> get good, taco good, night. good pizza from the Turkish family that owns the pizza place, pizza and kebab place down the street. So we get to get really yummy pizza from them. Now I am also excited. I ordered a barbecue grill, you know, basically the same type of barbecue grill I had in America. So I am excited to get that, and so we make some hometown favorites, but. Uh, it's, it's great. I love going to grocery store and just trying, like you said, trying new stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I always joke, you know, when you move to a new country and you don't speak the language and can't read, you only buy things at the grocery store that have pictures on the, on the packaging. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. I do get out my phone and do Google Translate though. And I'll, cause like I had to get a uh, natron, get baking soda and back pulver mm -hmm. to make an Osterlamm. Kuchen, and um, yeah, I mean, you never know what funny, you know, what's going to happen to you. you. Just pick stuff. I mean, one time when I was living in France and went to a restaurant and just like, I'll try this. I've never seen that word before. Well, we'll try it. And um, turned out it was kidneys. So, you know, <laughs> all right. You know, and well, I was, I was funny because my buddy was next to me. He's American too. And he didn't, he didn't give me the heads up. He knew what it was, and he he kept, ah, he kept that to himself. He let he let me walk the plank funny. on my own. So that's a good one. <laughs> but it's it's great, you know. It's it's always an adventure when you try yeah. new stuff, and sometimes you hit on stuff that you've never really had before, and it's just awesome. So it's really cool. Yeah, and we probably would be trying a whole lot more German food if restaurants were open. <laughs> yeah, but right. With the coronavirus, of course, there's no restaurants have been open since we moved here. And that's really a shame that we could be getting takeout. But we just keep, for I don't know, I just keep forgetting, honestly. I don't, I'd much rather be in the restaurant, you know, we can practice our German and and get, you know, more German culture. And so I'm really looking forward to when restaurants open up again. And then number 10 is we had to invest in snow gear for our, for our kids and for us. Uh, yeah. You know, of course, there is snow in America. Ask yes. any Minnesotan, they know for sure uh -huh. there's plenty of snow. But yeah. for us, there, there there's really plenty wasn't. Of places in the US you know, that it's, snow. so we came and we had some jackets, but we didn't have any snow pants and no snow boots and for snow the kids gloves. and no snow gloves. So we had to, you know, we had to stock up on that. And we've had some good weather that was, you know, nice and toasty warm these last couple of weeks. And then bam, we got another snap and we got, you know, a good 10 centimeters of snow out there again. So yep, uh, right we, now there's we, snow outside. <laughs> so we've def definitely gotten use out of our, our snow gear. So that's great. Yeah. And we've had three snowstorms since we moved here. And yeah. when we arrived, they had just had a ton snow. of snow and there was a lot of snow on the ground. It all Maybe. melted. Then a huge 10 day streak of snow came. It was more than a foot and a half, probably two feet that we got, which is 60 centimeters. Isn't that two feet? Sounds about 30 right. 30 centimeters, I believe Sounds it's one foot. Right. It, it was a ton of snow, tons. And we had so much fun. And then this past week, more snow came back. And this is more snow than our children have seen in their entire lives. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it has been really novel, been really fun. And we're really enjoying the snow. All right, everybody, that's what we have for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to hear more from us, please make sure you subscribe and YouTube will let you know when our next video comes out. We try to post every week. If you like this video, we'd love for you to give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below, Germans. Let us know, are these things that we mentioned part of your daily life also? Do you have things in this list that you don't do at all? Or things yeah. you recommend we should be doing. Yes, what else should we <laughs> add to our list? <laughs> How are more ways that we can be more German? <laughs> and so thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate all of your comments and we try to read and respond to everyone um, as much as we can. All right, you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you later. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss. Ciao. <laughs>